Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, and this is case 16 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a patient in whom the native coronary artery CTO was uh, canalized in order to treat a large saphenous vein graft aneurysm. The patient had coronary bypass graft surgery multiple years before and presented with an expanded saphenous vein graft aneurysm to the right posterior descending artery. There were prior stents placed into this, aneur into this graft, but now there is the aneurysm. We see there is flow partially through the stents, and there is flow partially outside the stents, and getting back inside the stents, filling the posterior descending artery. So a very complex uh, saphenous vein graft with um, um, areas of aneurysm and previous stents. The native right coronary artery was occluded. There was significant proximal cap ambiguity with multiple bridging collaterals. In a, a previous institution, there was an attempt to recanalize the CTO of the right coronary artery. There was an attempt to cross the vein graft in the way to the PDA. However, it was um, not uh, possible to advance a microcatheter through the stent struts distally. So to plan the case, we did a triple injection in addition to the dual injection because we wondered whether we had some retrograde access to the posterior descending artery. We knew that recanalizing the native right would have been very challenging because of the ambiguous proximal cap and the long occlusion length. And therefore, the question was whether we could go retrograde. We did a triple injection because part of the vessel was filling via the lima graft. However, even here we don't really have any good septal collaterals. There's some filling of uh, another smaller branch, but um, the posterior descending artery essentially fills only from the saphenous vein graft. And once again, the native right coronary artery has significant proximal cap ambiguity with multiple branches on both uh, sides of the proximal cap, which was fairly difficult to discern. As a first attempt, we tried retrograde again with a different microcatheter, but we were unable to advance the microcatheter past the distal saphenous vein graft. And as a result, we converted to an undergrade approach. And because of the proximal cap ambiguity, we knew we would have to do some maneuver to be able to resolve that ambiguity. The maneuver we chose is the scratch and go maneuver. We advanced a stiff guide wire proximal to the proximal cap and we caused a small dissection as can be seen in this view. This is uh, an example of the scratch and go technique, one of the techniques that can be used to resolve the proximal cap ambiguity. The retrograde was not possible in this case and geography was not helpful. We did not do CT and, geog and geography and there was no large enough branch to do intravascular ultrasound. This is how the scratch and go goes. A wire is advanced into the adventitia proximal to the proximal cap. Then a microcatheter is advanced close to the track created by the wire. A polymer jacketed wire is advanced to create a knuckle. And then subminimal crossing of the CTO follows. In this particular case, we were able to advance a knuckle past the dissection plane proximal to the proximal cap and then we switched the knuckle wire for the cross post catheter that advanced into this vessel. However, the injection from the saphenous vein graft suggests that the cross post is not in the right position. We pulled back and then did the knuckle redirect into the posterior descending artery and then we were able to advance a loop away from um, the um, proximal uh, small branch all the way to the posterior descending artery. And then with great difficulty, we were able to deliver a stingray balloon all the way to the distal vessel in an attempt to re-enter proximal to the attached town of the saphenous vein graft. This was very hard to do. We eventually used additional knuckling, trying to advance the stingray further down and we were then able to advance the stingray balloon a little closer to the touchdown of the saphenous vein graft. We did repeat re-entry attempts with the stingray system using the stick and swap technique. These are the stingray balloons and we're trying to advance the balloon on the side porch. And then after multiple attempts, we were finally able 
to re-enter into the true lumen and actually were able to advance the wire retrograde through the saphenous vein graft. That was um, very useful because delivering a stand across this large torsosity was very challenging, but were eventually able to deliver a stand all the way into the distal right coronary abutting the area of the saphenous vein graft touchdown. And after placing the first stand, there is now some retrograde flow into the native right. We lined the entire right coronary artery with drug eluting stents. And after doing that, we were able to restore TIMI3 undergrade flow into the right posterior descending artery with some retrograde flow back into the diseased and aneurysmal saphenous vein graft. It was very, very challenging to advance an undergrade wire into the PDA. We were finally able to do it. However, we could not deliver a stand to stand into the PDA. Therefore, we left uh, the patient with um, uh, this result. We did not coil the saphenous vein graft quite yet, but we elected to have the patient return in a few months for coiling the, ve the vein graft after we ensured that there was good flow in the right coronary and growth of the distal vessel. There are several potential lessons from this case. The first is that treating the native coronary is preferable to treating a diseased saphenous vein graft. An alternative approach in this case would have been to go into the graft and deploy cover stents. However, multiple cover stents would be needed and the long-term patency of this very diseased graft would be likely poor. The second is that flexibility is important in challenging cases like this. When, for example, a retrograde crossing does not work, as was the case, it, uh, it was critical to switch to a different strategy, namely undergrade dissection reentry. Also, multiple techniques were needed in this particular case. The first was the scratch and go technique to resolve the proximal cap ambiguity. Then we did dissection initially with the knuckle wire, then with the crossbows. Once the crossbows entered a small side branch, we had to do knuckle redirection to direct it into the distal right coronary artery. Then we had to use uh, a move of the re-entry zone after failure to re-enter in the distal RCA. We used the so-called bob sled technique to advance the stingray balloon a little further distally and attempt a re-entry in that location. And finally, we used the stick and swap technique, switching the stingray wire for the polymer jacketed wire to achieve re-entry into the distal true lumen. Thank you.